Do you have a wife or children and are they part of the farm? How can I supervise my farm when I work far away and I have a full-time job? Well, 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 well. I was thinking about going to record the video, you know, right on the farm. You can tell, well, it's too bright. But I'm right on the farm. But with a sample of questions that I've read, I think I'm going to sit right here in front of my house because I have quite a number of questions. I mean, over 50 questions that I have to go through. I'll try and go through them as quickly as possible so that I can answer as many of your questions that you guys have been asking me in a recent post that I made, you know, letting you know if you can ask me any questions. So I'm going to try to answer them and come on, let's get into it and try to be as quick as possible. So we'll start with that one. Do you have a wife or children? If yes, how do they take part of the farm? Do they understand your plans well? Well, guys, yes, I do have a wife and uh, children, yeah? And um, are they part of the farm? Yes, in one way or another, they are. Are they part of the plans of the farm? Of course, 100% part of the plans of the farm. But you see, everyone is different. And when you're doing a business, you want to do everything in the best interests of the business, not even in your own personal best interests. So for me, when I'm starting the farm, I try to make sure that I get the best people for each of the positions on the farm to do as much of it as possible. Now, you can get your family involved if you do believe your family are the best people to do the things over there. If you don't think they are the best people for whatever, reasons maybe they are not interested maybe they're a bit more interested in other things maybe they are not available then it just makes sense that you don't give it to them because then you're setting yourself up for failure so that's what i always tell people you want to get the best people involved and personally my family is not 100 percent interested in directly getting involved and running the farm there are things that i do involve them about the farm and they 100 percent know the plans and everything that happens but in terms of active day-to-day -day running no so for you for your family it might be different most probably the reason you ask this question is because you want to know how to involve your family in your business or whatever it is for your family it might be different for my family it's different the idea is to make sure that the business is as best positioned as possible to thrive with or without your family dr. Daniel when is the farm up Academy coming well this is probably the most asked question in all the posts that I post now I've been telling you guys for a long time that the farm up Academy is coming but Yes, it is soon. I mean, forget about all the promises. It's not months away. It is just a couple of weeks away. Now, what's even more exciting is that the first thing you're going to be seeing from the Farm Up Academy is going to be completely free. Yes, completely free. Now, as part of the launch of the Farm Up Academy, I'm going to be running a free online training, 100% free, live with me. You have that right. An in-depth training, 100% free with me. Now, in this free online live training with me, we're going to learn how to start and build a profitable poultry farm that can make you anything between five and 15,000 US dollars within just 21 weeks. You heard that right, 21 weeks. And in there, we're going to be sharing things like how to finance your farm, how to get money to start your farm, how to develop the best business model for your farm, all the skills and technical things that you need to ensure that you succeed. Basically, all the technical and business stuff that a lot of people would consider quite boring for YouTube, but for you who wants to start and succeed at your farm is actually quite interesting and very relevant. There'll be a lot for us to go through, a lot of things that I personally haven't shared on YouTube before. I'm really excited to be going onto this live training with you guys. And in all honesty, I haven't done anything like this before. The training is going to take place really soon and it's going to be absolutely free. But for you to join, you need to register. So I'm going to leave a link in the description box where you can click. It will take you to a page where you can register. And also there you'll get the information of when exactly it will be and how you can join. I'm really excited and I can't wait to see you guys there. So I hope I've sorted all questions about the Farm Up Academy. Let's get on to the next one. Do you have predator pressure? If so, how are you dealing with it? If not, how do you avoid it? Predator pressure, honestly, in all honesty, I don't have a lot of predator pressure. Predators usually would be birds of the air and animals, you know, wild animals coming from around. But my chickens are in houses and the houses are well built to ensure that nothing can get inside there. So even if predators were around, they certainly wouldn't be entering. That's for the chickens. Now for the goat farm, of course, I had a problem recently. I think I actually shared a video on the channel about how wolves, you know, some form of animals attacked my goat farm and, uh, you know, killed about six animals. It's something that I've implemented and tried to make better on the new 
goat house that I've constructed. I'll actually leave a link to that video right here, the new goat house. It's a very beautiful video and that's how I've tried to avoid the predator pressure. It's not a big issue for me currently, honestly. Would you be close to where you are right now if you never had a YouTube channel? Well, I think that's a really crazy question. That's a really weird question that I honestly think doesn't have a proper answer. It's like asking a millionaire, someone with a hundred million dollars and you ask them, would you be where you are if you didn't go to the college that you went to or the university or the elementary school that you went to? And it's quite hard to answer because probably they are where they are because of the connections that they got from the college that they went to. So you can say that if they didn't go to that college, they wouldn't be there. But if they didn't go to that college, they probably would have gone to another college. And if they had gone to another college, maybe they would even have better connections and maybe that means they would have had even more money. But maybe they would never have met anyone there and maybe they would have less money. So you can't know. So in all honesty, if I weren't on YouTube, of course YouTube has given me a lot of opportunities, but if I were not on YouTube and if I hadn't taken up the opportunities given to me from YouTube, I probably would have been doing something that probably could have even given me more opportunities and probably I'll be even further than where I am right now. But probably I would have nothing, so honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm where I am. How can I have my own broiler breeder farm? Well, you can have your own broiler breeder farm. You know, you, you just contact a broiler breeder supplier and if you have the money to pay, you pay them, they'll supply them to you. But running a breeder farm is quite complicated, very technical. It has a lot of details. It's very expensive. That's the other thing. It requires a lot of details. You need a hatchery. You need a very strict biosecurity program, it's quite expensive. So yes, you can, but you need to make sure that you're ready for it. Why did you choose to do livestock over crops? In all honesty, it's because in livestock, you have way more control over things compared to crops. With crops, I mean, I also do crops, yeah? I do crops, but I don't focus on them a lot, yeah? I do crops. And I've previously shared on the channel my previous experiences with, for example, growing maize. Man, you plant maize one season, plant 200 acres, the rains disappear, the things dry up. The next time you plant 200 acres, the rain comes and it's too much, the maize gets flooded. The next time you decide to plant, you know, 25 acres, the rain is perfect and you get good yields, but you only planted 25 acres. So it's so, it feels like a gamble to me. So that's why I prefer to do things where you are in a bit more control. Now, of course, if I had irrigation schemes and things like that, I would certainly do more crop farming because there there is more control but for now i'm not doing that so that's why i do animal husbandry more compared to crops is it advisable to breed your purpose buds for eggs yeah, yeah yeah why not why not i mean for egg production of course but it's not as efficient as using layers so your purpose buds if they are really good will give you maybe 220 eggs a year that's nothing compared to the 340 that layers can give you so why not go for layers instead of dual purpose? Please make a video showing us the difference between male and female chicks at zero to eight weeks. Well, in all honesty, depending on the type of chickens, it can either be easy or difficult, yeah? If it's local chickens where there is no like distinct colors, it's really difficult. If it is, you know, the more commercial exotic chickens, for example, my layers, right at day one, simply using feather colors, you can separate them. So really, it depends on the breed and um, it can be quite easy or quite difficult. Have you thought of implementing tech systems for efficiency of grid capabilities and remote management? Well, that's what the Farm Up Academy is all about. People keep asking me and I'll tell you guys in all honesty, sometimes I can spend two, three months without stepping on the farm and I know everything is running efficiently. Why? Because I've implemented systems to ensure that everything runs properly. Now, this stuff is really boring for YouTube because it goes into a lot of detail, but for you who wants to start a farm, come on. The Farm Up Academy is made for this, so watch out for it when it does start very soon. How can I supervise a farm when I'm on a full-time job and the farm is over 600 kilometers away? Of course, I think this can be answered by the previous question. It's all about systems. You don't need to be present, it's all about systems. What's your full birthday? <laughs> This is a crazy one. Guys, by the way, my birthday is on the 6th of June. So I don't know if it will be before or after this video has uploaded. Of course, I've recorded the video before my birthday, which is very soon. But uh, yeah, on the 6th of June, you want to know the exact year? 1992. So you can calculate my age. Um, Hi, Doc. I've been following the updates on your goat farm. How would you compare goat and chicken farming more so when it comes to the market for end products and profit margins? Are you planning to make it a big project like you've done with poultry um in terms of absolute profit chickens way 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 more than goats i mean many times more but uh, both of them are really profitable the advantage with goat farming is that it doesn't need as much supervision as chickens i mean 
it's a bit less delicate and the risks are much lower. So that's the added advantage. But chickens are way more profitable. Do I plan on making it bigger? No, I actually already do have a big goat project. I mean, on the breeder farm, at some point we had over 800 goats and sheep. I've started one over here with just about 30 goats. But yeah, the goal is to make it big. So what's the use if it's not big if it's if it's just 30 goats it's really useless so get it as big as possible that's when it makes commercial sense what breed of layers do you keep isa brown that's the breed of layers i keep how do you manage low business in times of low demand how do you manage business in terms of low demand well it's all about understanding your market and maintaining your market if you maintain your market you're faithful to them you supply them you keep them and guard them jealously in terms of low market those guys will come back to you because usually in low market the problem is not that there's low market but the problem is that there's too much supply when there's too much supply, those guys will prioritize you over the other people and despite the fact that your prices might be low you'll still be in business. So you just need to make sure that your business is efficient. For example, your cost of production is not so high. If your cost of production is not so high, even with low cost of the product, you still have margins. So make sure your business is efficient and you maintain your customers. What's your biggest fear as a farmer and an entrepreneur? If there is any. Honestly, I don't think I have a, a big fear as a farmer and entrepreneur. Of course, everyone's fear is that someday they run out of business. But if you're an entrepreneur, an actual entrepreneur, even if you lost everything, you can be able to bounce back because it's about creativity, it's about your mind, it's not about the exact things that you're doing. So I honestly don't have fears. As long as I'm learning and trying to get better, I know that I can go through anything. Prevention is better than cure. I've had so many farmers speak about biosecurity. Please elaborate more on that and also how to spot and treat the most common sicknesses uh, that birds contract well. Biosecurity, I've made a lot of videos on this channel about biosecurity. We'll dive deeper into that on the Farmer Academy. But the most important thing is that you must implement biosecurity on your farm. Prevent introduction of diseases from the outside. There are so many things to carry out. I mean, there are over 30 points when it comes to biosecurity and farm sanitation and things like that. So it's really, really important. I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. In terms of diseases, that's even a more complicated question. You see, I can share those diseases right here, but most probably you're going to forget them. But also number two, Unless you're a doctor, you know, some form of doctor who properly understands poultry diseases, it will be difficult because I'll share the symptoms right here. It's like when it comes to, you know, humans, yeah? If you start feeling cold and you feel a fever, it could be, I don't know, 10 different diseases. Fever in itself doesn't signify a disease. So unless you're a vet and you can, you know, open birds up, do post you know, do pathology tests, or even take off samples and go take them to the lab and do things, you can't really tell diseases simply based from symptoms. You can. Some of them have what you'd call typical signs and symptoms, but most of them won't. And unless you're really good at it, you won't. So if I tell you here, because you're not trained and you totally don't understand, you will think it is this and you'll treat it and it will be something else. So I would rather advise that if you do have a disease on your farm, call someone who is skilled, someone who understands how to treat it and they help you better than you trying to sort it, trying to save money and then you get into problems. But the biggest thing is prevention is better than cure, like someone said. Just don't get there. Uh, hi doc, what's the most important thing to consider when starting a poultry farm? Most important thing, number one, the location of the farm. Very important because it will determine the market, it will determine the supply that you get, it will determine the kind of stuff that you get. The location of the farm is very important. But number two, the stuff that you get on the farm. Very important because the stuff will make or break the farm. You need to make sure that they can implement and follow the systems that you set in place for you to run your farm. Okay? Why do you dip the birds in water? when they are broody. Well, it's because it works. Yeah. So being broody is when birds then start sitting on their egg. You, if you're running a commercial layer farm, like I am right here, you don't want birds to sit on their eggs because when birds sit on their eggs to try and incubate them, they stop laying. Yeah, it's a natural thing. They stop laying. Now, you want them to keep in the laying phase all throughout. So the way you do it is you get them, dip them in water, the broodiness, the feeling, and the desire to sit on eggs will go away. So it's because it works. Maybe someone tested it and noticed that that's what works and that's what we use. When you grind your maize to make feeds, where do you put the posho? Posho is like the flour that you get from maize when you grind it. Uh, do you mix it in the feeds also? Basically, tell me about the process if possible. Well, there are two things about maize that are used in making feed. Number one is the maize itself. We just break it. We don't grind it. So we don't get off the cover and get the flour. No. We just break it into smaller pieces that can be eaten by the chickens. But the other thing that we utilize is usually the maize bran, which is the outer cover that is a byproduct of milling maize to make the flour. Now that one, I don't grind on my farm 
because it's not effective. Yeah, I'm not going to use the flour. It's useless for me. So I just go and buy, you know, the cover. It's called maize bran. You know, the husk, the outside of it alone. And that's what I mix in my feed. Yeah. So there is no need for me to grind it for that. I simply grind it when I'm simply breaking it into smaller pieces. Uh, what was your turning point in life? And what are the five book recommendations for finance and self-help. Well, this is a little bit off in terms of farming. Most probably this person phoned me on my other channel. Meanwhile, I'll send you guys over to my other channel where I talk about, you know, finance and personal help and personal growth. It's called Dr. Daniel Masaba. I'll probably leave a link to that channel right in the description. But um, I don't personally feel like there was a turning point in my life, like at a point where I felt like this is the turning point in my life. There are so many steps along my life that I feel like if this individual thing didn't happen, my life wouldn't be like this. It would completely be different. So it's not like one thing that completely flipped my life around, no. It was very many things all along my life and they have completely changed my life. Five book recommendations for finance and, uh, and self-help. Well, there are quite many. I'll go through my, um, my bookstore and uh, I'll tell you guys the ones that I think I really, 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 really enjoyed. One of them is The Psychology of Money. Number two, The Millionaire Fast Lane. Number three, $100 million offers. Number four would be Never Split the Difference. And number five, Influence, New and Expanded. Those five books, awesome. Now, of course, my library has way more books than those, but I think I love those five, so you can check them out. What are the working schedules for employees? How many hours a week do they work? How many days in a week? And also, how much time do they get off from work annually for vacation? And most importantly, what do you do if an employee gets sick? Do they get sick pay or get a pay cut? And when they are sick, who does their roles on the farm? Well, this is an interesting one. And honestly, for you who is asking such a question, the Farm Up Academy would be very important for you. But I'll try to give the basic overview of it. The most important thing to realize is that, first of all, work on the farm never stops. Chickens feed from Monday to Sunday, so work must go on. That's what you need to remember. But number two, you also need to remember that the people you're employing are actually human beings. Yeah, They can't work without having days off. They will, they will get insane and they will leave. If they are really good and efficient, they'll get tired and go away. So you must give them days off. What I personally do is that, usually I have extra people around, yeah, to make sure that the people usually always have a day off. Now, some people decide not to take their day off and they accumulate the days and, uh, you know, take maybe two or three weeks away, which is fine with me, yeah? But the most important thing is that you must give the people days off. So, because there's usually an extra person, if someone gets sick, the extra person, you know, fills in. I mean, for every day, there should be at least one person who's resting. That's the whole idea. So, of course, when someone gets sick, that means on that day, there's no one resting, but it's understandable because someone is sick, they shouldn't be working. And you can't tell someone you're not going to pay them because they are sick. I mean, they are, they are sick, yeah? Unless it's an extended illness. They are sick, they have no control over that. So you will pay them and um, it's okay. Unless they decide you know, to take an extended time off, maybe they are sick for months, then you can say, you know, we'll only compensate you for maybe this amount of sick days, you understand? So that's what I personally do. You need to remember that these people are human beings and for them to work efficiently, um, you need to give them time to rest, just like you would want to rest. Why do you sell your buds after harvest? Well, in the market, <laughs> there are people who, who are desiring and want to buy these buds. Um, What's the standard poultry vaccination schedule in East Africa to ensure 100% survival rate? Uh, I have vaccination schedules that I use on my farms on my website. I'll leave a link to the website, uh, you know, the farm up website in the description. Reveal your feed formula. Well, guys, feed formulas are so complicated. People keep asking me this question, I mean, over and over again, right from the time I said the farm up channel. And it's too complicated and also boring unless you're really interested in it. It would take a lot of videos and it requires a lot of, I would say, brain work and uh, a lot of context. Now that's why I haven't shared it here, but certainly I'm going to share it in the Farm Up Academy, so just join. What should I use to treat fall pox? Well, fall pox is a viral disease, and in all honesty, viral diseases don't have treatment. Like, you know, a lot more, okay, not, not all, but most viral diseases don't have absolute treatment. It's the body that fights it off, you know? It, you strengthen the body and it fights it off. So with fall pox, you want to avoid it. You don't want to treat fall pox. You want to vaccinate the chickens against fall pox so that they don't get it. Now, when they do get it, of course, it will come with other things. For example, the chickens will get wounds on their heads, and so you can give antibiotics to treat the wounds so that the wounds also don't get infected while you boost it and boost its immunity so that it recovers. But in terms of treating it like medicine to cure fall pox, it's not there. Do you think starting a farm at 20 years is good 
or waiting to start at 25 years. Well, you can start a farm at, at 13 years. It doesn't really matter. As long as you have the mental capacity to start and manage and run the farm, whether you're 13 or 31 or 91, it doesn't really matter. Whichever age, you can start as long as you're fulfilled. Do your layer chicken need light at night? Yes, I do give them light. You know, there's a lighting schedule. Yeah a complicated lighting schedule that I do utilize on the layer farm. And uh, yeah, it works really well. It's very important, by the way. Which farm do you get your layer chicks from? I need some. I get them from the farm up farm. Yeah, <laughs> they're farm up chicks. Yeah, so um, you'll find a link on where you can order those chicks in the video description. How do you find customers for your products? Well, you go marketing, you go look for the client. You go from place to place. And when you get the customers, make sure you don't lose them. Treat them very jealously. Treat them really nicely. Could you post a video about brooding broilers, how to feed them out to, how long should they be awake and when they should be asleep? Um, have I made a video about brooding broilers? I think I haven't. It will certainly be part of the Farm Up Academy, but I mean brooding layers is just like brooding broilers. So it shouldn't be any different. I think I've made some videos about brooding layers, so you can check them out. But the other thing is that how long should they be asleep? This is another mistake I find people farm, a lot of farmers making. They think that chickens shouldn't sleep, so if they are sleeping, they wake them up. It's just like you, when you eat and you're satisfied, you sleep. Put your head down. So don't make the chickens suffer, waking them up when they are trying to rest, yeah? When they want to eat, they will get up and eat. When they eat and they are comfortable, they lie down and sleep. So let them sleep. Don't determine for them how long to sleep, yeah? Uh, which breed of chickens do you use for layers and broilers? Again, I've said for layers, it's a brand for broilers, Cobb 500. I want to start goat farming business. Give me advice. Just get stuck on the channel. I have a lot of videos about goat farming. How long are commercial layers productive? This really varies depending on the cost of production. Yeah. So commercial layers, I mean, when they start to lay, they will start at around 18, 19 weeks. And then they will go and peak at about, you know, in the 30s, you know, they are at peak, you know, up to about 30 something weeks. They are still at the peak. Then they slowly start decreasing from the 95 percent and so when you call them really simply depends on how effective they are in terms of laying yeah so they could be laying at let's say 65 percent but the cost of feed is so high then you need to call them but they could be laying at 50 percent but the cost of feed is so low it's enough to pay for them then you don't need to call them so it simply depends on the cost of feeding them and the cost of eggs in your area when the cost of feeding them and running them is much higher than the, uh, the percentage of eggs or the number of eggs you get from them, then they are no longer productive and you get rid of them. Usually that's any time between 72 weeks and 100 weeks. So you can keep them for anything between 72 weeks and 100 weeks, depending on how well they are working on the farm. What's the vaccination should you use to vaccinate your poultry and can it be the same as for the local chicken? Uh, like I've told you, that vaccination shed you can get from my website. Can it be the same for local chicken? Yes. The vaccination shed you use for layers is exactly the same as what you use for your local chickens. So come on, go with it. Um, how did you start your agribusiness and what does it take to succeed in it? I started my agribusiness in 2019 while still working as a doctor because I was looking for a side hustle, you know, something to make me money. Now, of course, in the end, it stopped being a side hustle. It became the real hustle, it became the main deal. But you know, um, what does it take to succeed? It takes focus, it takes dedication, it takes sacrifice, it takes a lot of mental work, a lot of preparation for you to succeed. It's not like you can't succeed, but you need to be dedicated, yeah? You need to put in place the right systems. And if you really want to start a poultry farm and succeed, with the Farmer Academy, that won't fail. What do you think is better? Buying layers already at the point of laying ends or buying chicks and raising them yourself? Which one is more effective and economical? Any day, any time, I would tell you raising the chicks yourself is better than buying them. Why? Because, first of all, people say that raising the chicks is difficult. But if you learn and understand the skills required to raise the birds from one day old, there is no issue. It's not, it's, it's not rocket science. I mean, people go to school and learn how to propel a rocket to the moon. I mean, if, by the way, guys, if a rocket from the moon was launched off and it was 0 0.0001 degrees off, by the time it reaches the distance that's close to the moon, it would be like miles and miles apart from its destination. So you need to be so accurate about it, but people will be able to learn those things and perfect them. How about raising chickens? Why would people think it's so hard? I mean, you can learn it and do it well. So in all honesty, you 
should raise your buds from day old. That gives you all the full control. If you do buy buds at point of lay, you don't know how the guys have raised them. How the buds are going to lay is going to be dependent on how they have been raised from one day till 18 weeks. So if you're buying them at 18 weeks, you don't know how the people have raised them. How can you be certain that you're going to get the best results out of your farm, in all honesty? So I don't advise you to buy point of lay chickens, I mean, raise them yourself. Which direction should you put the mesh openings for the chicken house face? East, west, north, south, what's the reason? Well, your chicken house should be oriented in the east to west direction. That's if it's an open sided house and it has mesh on the sides. East to west direction to ensure that the open sides where there is mesh, sunlight does not enter. The reason is because you don't want sunlight to enter so that number one, the temperature inside the house is consistent, but number two, so that birds don't pile up, you know, trying to get some of the sun, they pile up and they end up dying. Okay? If one has $15,000 in Africa and is confused whether to start a poultry farm in Africa or travel abroad, what will be your advice for him or her? I mean, why would you want to travel abroad with $15,000? I think that's nothing. Well, it depends on which abroad you're going to. You're going to a really poor country, then it might be something, but why would you want to travel abroad, I mean? Start your poultry farm. With $15,000, you can start a proper poultry farm. I started my poultry farm. I mean, by the time the birds got to laying, I think I'd invested quite an amount of money, but with $15,000, you can actually start a proper poultry farm. So, why go abroad? I don't understand. You might have your reasons, but I don't think that makes sense. Take us through a step-by-step -step approach on how to prepare your land into segments with the fence, especially well, I think this person is talking about how to separate, you know, the farm. If you have cattle, goats, sheep, chickens. Well, the most important thing is that the chickens must be in their unit and they should be separated. And the other animals can be anywhere else. My farm, where I do have all these animals, is what, over 400 acres. So I don't have a problem with that. It's easy to compartmentalize, but you don't want your animals to be in the same unit. Uh, what uh, makes your marketing effective? Hard work following up with clients to make sure that you're giving them the you know the best service and uh, making sure that you consistently have a product available that's it i'm asking if you have a partner at the breeder farm i think i've talked about this so many times and the answer is yes um what is your hierarchy structure i mean do you arrange your employees or staffs in production management marketing etc i would like to convey to you my healthiest thanks okay um all right so structure well there's production and there's sales Plain and simple. The two don't mix. Because when they do mix, there's always chaos. So then, in production, there's a proper hierarchy. And in sales, there's a proper hierarchy. Depending on how big, you know, the farm is or the production is. Each one of them will have some form of hierarchy. If you only have a thousand layers or a thousand birds on your farm, you don't need a very huge structure. But if you do have a huge production unit, then you might need someone in charge of the feed meal, someone in charge of the brooding, someone in charge of the production. So it really just depends on how big your thing is. But the idea is to separate sales from production. I recently started a goat farm courtesy of your motivation educate me on goat farm management well again just get stuck on the channel i've shared a lot of goat farming videos and i'm also going to be bringing you very many more take us through the appropriate growth rate for layers chicken from day one to production well that is a long boring video for someone who is not interested in farming i mean i'll tell you guys a lot of people actually watch this channel simply because it's interesting and they learn a lot of things so i don't want to share very technical things that are Boring for a lot of people, the, the video will end up being watched by only three or ten people. So, again, if you want to get this information, the Farm Up Academy. So, guys, I'll stop right here. I mean, I had a lot of questions, I think over 180 questions from the YouTube post and very many others from X. Meanwhile, if you're not following me on X, you should go and check it out at Daniel Masaba on X. Go and check me out. That's formerly Twitter. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Come on, hit that subscribe button, smash the notification bell. Catch you very soon with another video. It's quite hot, guys. Um, so I think I need to go and take a glass of water. Lots of love. Bye-bye.